Well, welcome back everyone to the Rest Podcast. And this is episode four with Virginia Dixon and myself. And today's quote is, take care and keep your soul, your mind, heart, will, and feelings diligent so that you do not forget the things that your eyes have seen. So with that, Virginia, can you introduce us to the topic that you are going to be discussing with us today? Sure. Our personal and ancestral stories, we're going to be discussing that today, how understanding our full story is essential to finding rest, and our full story is enveloped in theirs, and how we can begin to understand our full story and use this to heal and end negative, perhaps generational patterns. When you really think about it, the baton from our ancestors to us is really passed. It's like a baton that's passed. If you look at life like a relay race, and now it's our time to run this leg of the race, it all starts making sense. Mm -hmm. Years ago, when I was a sophomore, preparing for this just reminded me of this event. I was doing my homework. My dad walked up and asked to see my books, turned them over and quietly flipped through the pages. And then he flipped the book back around and gave it to me. And of course, I was perplexed and I said, Dad, what's wrong? Is something wrong? And I'll never forget his expression. He walked away from the table and turned around And it's so strange. It plays in slow motion in my mind. He said, be careful. If I didn't know better, I'd think they're trying to educate 200 million non-thinking people. And now I understand what he meant. He was the product of, of an education system that engaged reason. He was classically educated, of course. He was born in the 1930s, and everything was about reasoning, reading and reasoning. And as an engineer, educated abroad, he had experienced an entire different education system. But he saw the decline of a system as education became standardized. And he saw the same pattern in America. But it just gripped me because I've seen that pattern, in fact, play out. And... Another thing that he said that provoked a lot of thought recently, especially given the times that we're living in, over a dinner conversation, he said why America was the greatest country in the world and why we had immigrated to America. But he said there's something called the CIA, and he's the one that explained to us the CIA and how it operated that and how it operated internationally in other small countries and that to keep our eyes wide open because one day that beast will turn on itself and i just so much of my own history and so much of my own view of reality and so much of my life is wrapped up in his history and his understanding of education, politics, philosophy, theology, family systems, values, right? Mm -hmm. So his story came to bear on my life and on the things he taught me. And I'm just seeing how it plays out even and now. I'm in my 60s and I still draw from that well of conversations I had with him But really, the conversations I had with him were the product of his own life stories and the things he'd experienced. I just think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Which leads us, you know, the title of this episode is The Value of Story. But I think we really have to start with defining that and what that means, because that's a phrase you use very often, the value of story. So what is a person's story? Right. It's a sum total of what they've experienced, but what they've inherited for their, from their ancestors. Look at my dad as an immigrant. Look what he taught us. Look what he said. 
look at that image that I have in my head. I remember what he was wearing. I remember him tapping on my books twice. I remember him turning it around. I remember we were eating barbecued chicken (laughs) and salad and potatoes when we were having dinner. I remember the smell in the room when he would teach us and tell us but what did he teach us and what did he tell us and what did he attempt to communicate and pass on mm. and what did to you his inherit best, it, exactly even outside it's, of that. it's a product mm-hmm. of his own story and of course my own experiences are woven into that but what I mean is that our stories don't just begin at home and I say that over and over and over mm-hmm. they begin in the home of the home of our parents 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 but here I'm still listening and hearing intently to those phrases that he spoke to me, Mm -hmm. what, Mm -hmm. 50 years ago. And just to condense it for the listener, it sounds like what you're saying is our story really boils down to three things. It's our ancestral heritage, the lives that our parents lived and the experience we the experiences we have had in our own life exactly because when you peel back the layer of that little narrative i told you about my dad right i saw his hopes his dreams his fears and his passions all wrapped up in the stories that he told me about himself about his pilgrimage in the stories i heard behind his advice behind his observations about things, politics, education, family. So all that really is woven much into the tapestry of why I do what I do today. Mm -hmm. And we'll discuss that further Mm -hmm. because it's really important and it's a beautiful part of healing and it's a beautiful part of our pilgrimage through time that we don't often unwrap. So what needs to happen in order for an individual to be able to know and understand their story? Frankly, we need to have faith and courage to explore and wonder about the stories of those around us. And they generally involve people in our nuclear family, and we need to have meaningful conversations with them. Ironically, more often than not, these are the people that we're often too busy to connect with or would rather not spend time with or take for granted the most. But the mysteries and the secrets about us are really wrapped up into much of their own heritage, their own perspectives, their own views, their own stories, Mm -hmm. especially our moms, dads, and grandparents. Mm -hmm. So much about us is wrapped up in them. So we've mentioned this a few times and even in previous episodes, but how can an individual know if something they're feeling or experiencing or even believing is ancestral, if it's been inherited? The simplest answer I have is that you can know because in the quiet places of your heart, when you're alone in the dark places of our lives or just in the quiet, silent spaces, right? wherever that may be the beliefs the beliefs or feelings that you have about yourself or a particular situation they don't seem to make sense it always feels like something's missing so you need to bring other people and other things and more information to bear and the best people i think that you need to consult to do that is your family, it's your relatives, painful as it may be, easy as it may be, difficult as it may be. Sometimes families have difficulty having serious conversations. Other families have too many intense conversations. Most families have neither. Mm. Some families are over enmeshed in each other's lives. Others are under enmeshed. It's finding the balance of those things. But regardless, being intentional about wondering why people do what they do or say what they say, but not wondering with the attitude of judgment, but wondering with the attitude of finding missing pieces about yourself. Mm-hmm. That's a perfect and being way to put it. honest about it with them. What does reconciling this family tree or this story do for you? It sets you free. It gives so much perspective to things that you otherwise would be confused about. It eliminates assumptions, presumptions, and um, many conflicts, I think, Mm. just 
frankly, disappear. It displaces a lot of confusion, chaos, and disease that you may have about so many things in your life. You would be surprised. You will be surprised if you embark on this pilgrimage. The things connected with misinformation and a limited perspective, perhaps, that you might have about what your relatives feel, think, have experienced, that cause a lot of division. It, it's, a, it's a worthwhile endeavor. It clarifies a lot of things. Hmm. More than you would think. Unbelievable. Hmm. I can't tell you the times that a patient walks out of my door and I ask him to write a letter to their mom, to their dad. And the things that are, and then I have them come back and read it to me. The letter's for them, not their parents. And the things that they discover about themselves always pale in contrast to what they wanted to tell the other person. Wow. Letters reveal hidden things about you. Wow, that's so powerful. And I know you had a patient example to share with us of a breast cancer patient, actually. Yep, I dealt with a beautiful, beautiful woman that was 42 years old, female, breast cancer. And by the way, breast cancer, we know, um, depicts unrest in the nest. There's a very specific emotional constitution to that disease. And she, she came and met with me a few times. And frankly, she just didn't want to go there. She just didn't want to delve into things. And she dug her heels in, which is absolutely OK. The courage and the desire were blunted, frankly, by the dogma of her, religi her religion, her worldview, her faith. It did not um, permit for her to live and explain and speak and communicate mm. about things like that. And examine. And examine. No, they just don't do that. Mm. You know, talk about those things, right? And every day I would pass her in the clinic, I would touch her and I would hug her and I would look deep into her eyes and I would just sometimes say nothing because she was so, so very ill. But I just wanted her to feel my love. That was it. And that because she didn't want to see me anymore, she, I wanted her to understand that I didn't take it personal. Mm -hmm. But I saw her shame and I saw her embarrassment. But it didn't matter. That wasn't for me to bear. All I had to do was love her well. And a lot of my colleagues, right, did the same. We all did the same. But the point was that I'll never forget the day I passed her. About five or six months had passed since she'd seen me professionally in a session. And she held my hand extra tight. She could hardly speak and said, can I, may I come see you? She whispered in my ear and I said, absolutely. But I've been seeing you in my heart every day I pass you. Nothing's mm. changed. We haven't skipped a beat. And a tear came down. In other words, I wanted her to know, I don't need you in my office to do my job. But I can't, you can't do your job without coming in my uh, office, uh -huh, uh -huh. And, right? And I'll never forget, I had the privilege of working with her twice a week for three months before she passed. And the things that transpired in those two months were the most beautiful things I've probably experienced almost with any other patient in my time at the clinic. Mm -hmm. And she brought her sweet mother that would pray the Quran over her every day. And she brought in her sister who flew in from out of state. And we had the most amazing conversation about family, about heritage, about traditions, about everything. And every one of those women changed me forever. And we talked about love. And we talked about, I'll never forget her sweet little mom in her veil. and her little Quran next to her chest. She put her hand on me and she just said, we never spoke about any of these things in my family or in their family or in their family's family. 
and I learned so much about the culture and about the traditions. But what I learned most was what is sacred about our human condition and how everything unites us and very little separates us and certainly not dogma. It cannot separate us because I had the most beautiful, unifying, healing time in helping them share the stories behind the pictures of their life, their trauma, their shame, their joy, their secrets Mm. that they'd never shared with one another. And it was just a transformational experience. So there is a perfect example how story and heritage can come together to bring about healing. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. it, It allowed her to find a sense of rest but not just her it spilled over into her Completely. mother and her sister mm-hmm. she cried and she said what i often hear you work with one patient but you healed our family mm. and nobody in that extended family system will ever fully understand what happened in that room but no religious dogma or anything separate us when i asked if i could pray because mm-hmm. i knew our days were limited and they bowed i I'll never forget it. We all bowed our heads, and it was our stories, and what's good, and what's bad, and what's painful. But it was the beauty and the ashes that ultimately unified and healed that family. Mm -hmm. And the journey to understand your story and the stories of those around you Mm -hmm. can be painful, scary, traumatic even but you have a really great takeaway for our listeners of how to begin that just a little bit something as simple as drawing a straight line on a piece of paper and putting a little two little dashes on the far left the first you know half inch three quarters of an inch segment should say nine months prior to conception the other little segment of equal proportion should be nine month, nine months womb or mm. in utero, right? And then the constitution of those two narratives, the, the stories of what transpired in the lives of your mom and dad and what was going on then is very important. And then start from zero to right now. On the top, write all the highs. On the bottom, write all the lows. And just plot that out for a minute and ask yourself, what are the stories I'd like to uncover, the secrets that I sense are there that I need to know? If you're sick and you're dealing with illness of any kind, it's imperative that you do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, it's imperative that you do this exercise as well because it'll bless you. And it'll heal relationships and it'll help you live with greater measures of freedom Mm -hmm. because you're shaming yourself and you're carrying a lot of things that aren't your story. Yeah, that's so powerful. So make a timeline, make a timeline of nine months before you were even conceived, the nine months that you were in your mother's Mm -hmm. womb, what was happening, and then basically once you were born, Mm -hmm. create a timeline. I love that, that's such a beautiful practice. Exactly, and when and if you're able to attend one of our REST events, we help fill in and explain what was happening in those 18 months working with you individually. Hmm. Because the body keeps a score. It does. Yeah, Uh, well thank you It's got the story, right? (laughs) The body has a story. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. We just hope this was expansive, healing, gave you a little bit of a direction. And we cannot wait to tune in with you again in our next episode of The Rest Podcast.